Uh, yeah. Okay. Then welcome everyone to this new edition of Ithaca. Before we start, I should say that Ithaca Live is happening in Turin uh, very soon, next month. And so check out our webpage and social media if you want to join us. You're absolutely welcome. And you still have one day or a couple of days still to send an email and join. And so today we have three speakers and the first one is Marco Volpe. And his talk is going to be about traces of dualizable categories and functoriality of the Becker Gottlieb transfer. And Marco, take the stage whenever you want. Okay, thanks for the introduction and thanks for the invitation. So, as it's written in here, this is a joint work with Maxime Ramsey and Sebastian Wolf. And yeah, let me start by giving you an introduction to this problem. So I guess that what probably everybody knows is that homology is usually covariant. But um, what you might not know is that there are some special functions between topological spaces for which you can associate wrong way maps in homology. And these are known as the Becker-Gottlieb transfers since they were introduced by Becker and Gottlieb in 1975. So uh, from the definition, I mean, it's not clear if uh, this um, wrong way maps can be assembled into um, uh, saying a code travariant functoriality for homology. And uh, as naive as the question might look, in fact, I mean, it, it has proven to be a very difficult problem to actually check that these transfers behave well under compositions. And it is still open today. And uh, even though, I mean, it's known for some special cases, like for uh, proper uh, fiber bundles between smooth manifolds. Uh, what I will do today is that I will combine techniques from topos theory and uh, non-commutative motives and dualizable categories, say, um, to um, construct a um, big class of maps to which you can associate transfers. And I will also show that these transfers assemble together into a fully functorial structure. And by fully functorial, I mean that they fit together into a functor of infinity categories. And let me stress that, uh, I mean, having a functor between feed categories, it's a, it's a big deal in some sense because it's a really, uh, it's a big, uh, it's a huge amount of data, say. Uh, and uh, this kind of functoriality for the becker gottlieb transfers is completely uh, new, say, even in, the, in the, even in the cases where the functoriality was known, it was known only at the level of the homotopy category, say. Um, so this is nice and yeah. So I guess that I would like to try to say something about how this proof of this construction works. And um, first, maybe I will start with the, say, more topos theoretic type the part of the story. So I will introduce this class of maps for which you can associate transfers and also explain how these transfers are constructed and defined. Then I will have to say something about dualizable stable infinity categories that uh, play, say, a very important role in the whole story. And at the end, I will uh, define uh, THH, topological shield homology, and uh, explain how to use it to construct such a such a functor. Okay, so let us start by defining what a locally contractible geometric morphism is. So, uh, I mean, I will only deal with locally compact houses of topological spaces for today, in case you wonder. So whenever you read topological spaces, if I haven't written locally compact Hausdorff, you just have to think about locally compact Hausdorff. And so uh, a continuous map between locally compact of spaces is said to be locally contractible if the pullback functor as well mature we are able to move us to the upper name of termini 1655 ali neće nikako moći imati nalaze krvi do tada u rej i kred okay <laughs> um if the pullback at the level of um, sheaves of infinity group points admits a left adjoint and this left adjoint satisfies a uh, projection formula, which is the one that I've written in the in there. So um, this is basically, I mean, uh, a version for infinity topoi of the notion of locally connected geometric morphisms that you might know from like uh, classical topos theory. Uh, and I think I don't know if it was actually introduced by Johnston, but I definitely learned it from from the elephant. Uh, and I mean, in general, I mean, uh, you should have a formula that involves pullback. I mean, the, the projection formula that you ask for, it's uh, slightly more complicated, 
But since I'm in the top, I I only I care about our localic. So I mean, this the, the formula simplified. To say that's why you only have products. Um, maybe let me give you some examples to give you an idea of what this thing is. So if you take the unique map to the point, uh, then uh, if X is locally contractible in the in like in the sense of topology, say, and also hypercomplete, whatever that means, uh, think about it as some kind of finite dimensionality thing. An example would be of CW complex. Then uh, the map, the unique map to the point is locally contractible. Uh, I mean, this is not an if and only if, but uh, this is uh, uh, like some some conditions, some uh, reasonable like point set topology condition that implies the toposteretic local, local contractibility. And um, I will denote by um, pi infinity of x uh, the this A lower sharp applied to the terminal object. And this is what's known as the shape of X, uh, which is, uh, I mean, an invariant of uh, uh, classical defined for compact house topological spaces uh, that was defined uh, maybe in the 70s, I think. Um, and um, I mean, it coincides with the weak homotopy type when X is nice enough, uh, nice enough. again, like for example, a CW complex, but in general, it's a slightly more refined invariant. Um, and maybe another example where the base is not uh, a point is that if you have a fiber bundle where the fibers are all locally contractible in the toposic sense, then F is locally contractible. And yeah, in general, I mean, you, you can ask F to be a submersion and not a fiber bundle, but maybe let's not spend too much time with that. Okay, so now I, um, I mean, I, I'm mainly interested in stable homotopy theory, so I want to um, study sheaves of spectra, say not only sheaves of infinity groupoids. And I mean, if you don't know, if you don't know what spectra are, you can think of, uh, say, the usual derived categories of sheaves of abelian groups. And I mean, in some sense, these derived categories of sheaves of abelian groups, they uh, say something about classical cohomology theories uh, in the sense like, like. Uh, Singular cohomology, say, while sheaves of spectra say know about uh, generalized cohomology theory, like uh, I mean, uh, K theory, cohomism, uh, whatever. But I mean, if you don't know what spectra are, you can just think of derived categories of uh, sheaves of abelian groups, and I think you will more or less get uh, what we're talking about. And yeah, so maybe let me just uh, before like start talking about uh, sheaves of spectra, let me remind you of the fact that there is a tensor product of co-complete uh, infinity categories. Uh, I mean, in the infinity categorical setting, this is due to Luri, but originally this is due to Kelly. Um, and uh, this is defined via the this uh, universal property that I've written here. Basically, I mean, uh, the tensor product co-represents variable-wise co-continuous functors. And I mean, this also tells you that the, I mean, this gives a monoidal structure into the category of uh, co-complete categories. And this monoidal structure is closed because I mean, you have this functor, I mean, you can take co-continuous functors. And you can easily show that if you have C, which is presentable, um, yeah, presentable, I mean, means low, maybe, maybe the, 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 the in one category theory, people usually say lo locally presentable or something, but this is what Lurie calls presentable. It's basically the same notion. Um, uh, you, you can see that if you take sheets of infinity group bytes and you tensor it with C, then this is the same thing as sheets with values in C. And um, you can take C to be spectra, for example, and the uh, uh, spectra is presentable, so you, you will get this formula. And if you start with a map of topological spaces, which is locally contractible, then, as I said before, you have this adjunction between co-continuous functors with the F lower sharp and the F upper star, and therefore, since both functors are co-continuous, you can tensor the adjunction with spectra, and you get an adjunction now at the level of sheets of spectra. Uh, that is the one that I write here. Um, and in fact, since you know that uh, the f lower sharp, the unstable f lower sharp has this projection formula, the stable f lower sharp will have a projection formula, but now with respect to the smash product of sheets of spectra. Um, maybe let me give a definition. So uh, let S be the sphere spectrum and let A be the unique map to the point and assume that it's uh, locally contractible. Then um, I define the sphere homology of the shape to be this uh, A lower sharp 
with coefficients in spectra applied to the constant sheaves on, on to the constant sheaf on the sphere spectrum. And I mean, you really have to think of it as the uh, homology with coefficients in the sphere spectrum of the shape of X. And this is a spectrum that you can easily show to co-represent sheaf cohomology of X. And the easy lemma, I guess, that um, so if you have a map of locally compact outer spaces, which is proper, like in the point set topological sense, namely that pre-images of compact sets are compact and locally contractible, then if you apply f lower sharp to the uh, constant, con constant sheets of the sphere, this is dualizable and the dual will be the f lower star. And uh, I mean, this is fairly easy to prove and it just um, follows from the fact that when f is proper, and not only f lower sharp as projection formula, but also f lower star. And uh, you can play with that and you just prove it very easily. But uh, why do I care about this dualizability statement? It's because this is like the, the thing that you need to know to define the Becker Gottlieb transfers. So finally, let me define the transfer. So start again with a map which is proper and locally contractible, and also assume that X and Y are locally contractible themselves, by which I mean that the like unique maps to the point are locally contractible. Uh, then you can do the following. Uh, since you know that F lower sharp is dualizable with dual F lower star, you have this co-evaluation map. And in the first step, I use projection formula for F lower sharp. I then use proper base change to the square, to the pullback square that I've written below so that I get the, the second equivalence. And then if I apply the unit of the adjunction uh, uh, delta upper star, delta lower star, well, delta is the diagonal map that I've also written below, I can, since, I mean, delta is a common section both of P and Q, I get back to F lower sharp. And you see that if you, now if A is the unique map from Y to the point, you can apply A lower sharp to the map above. And like the the, the, the left hand thing, uh, when you apply A lower sharp, it gives you the homology of the shape of Y. While the right hand thing, when you apply A lower sharp, it gives you the homology of the shape of X. And therefore, you get uh, this strong way map uh, at the level of homology of the sh of shapes. And this is the definition of the becker gottlieb transfer associated to F. And the question, as I said, is uh, whether these, func these, these transfers are functorial. Uh, more precisely, I mean, if you have two composable maps uh, that are both proper and locally contractible, and like the three spaces appearing are all locally contractible, uh, you may ask whether there is a homotopy that relates uh, uh, the transfer of uh, G comp uh, composed with the transfer of F with the transfer of the composition. And the answer, as I said in the in the in the introduction, uh, is our main theorem, namely, so if you have X which is locally contractible, then there exists a functor of infinity categories, uh, like the the domain is um, you take the slice um, over X like all locally compact outer spaces over X, but you only take uh, things that uh, are proper and locally contractible over X, and you also take only proper and locally contractible maps uh, between them. And then you have a contravariant functor from this category to the infinity category of spectra, uh, which at the level of objects associate, like if you have Y over X, uh, this associates with uh, the, the sphere homology of the shape of Y. And if you have a map between x uh, between y, y and z then this associate with the becker gottlieb transfer so as i said in the introduction i mean now the, this transfer can uh, can be assembled together into a functor of infinity categories and yeah let me make maybe a couple of comments about this statement um so uh, as i said i mean there were partial positive answers to the to the question of functoriality of the transfers namely for uh, these uh, special maps between with the smooth compact smooth manifold fibers. Uh, but this kind of functoriality were only proven at the level of ontopic categories. And so uh, what we have here is a much richer structure and it's, uh, it's much nicer in a way. Um, and then uh, maybe a, uh, a second point is that um, by the techniques of the proof, that, that we employ, we can also show that uh, when you have uh, a proper and locally contractible map, the homotopy fibers have to be equivalent to finite CW complexes. 
But in fact, if you use different methods, you can also define Becker Gottlieb transfers for maps whose homotopy fibers are uh, homotopy equivalent to retracts of um, of, uh, of finite CW complexes, so finitely dominated. Um, uh, however, uh, there have been previous attempts to prove functoriality for these more general transfers for maps with finitely dominated fibers, but uh, these attempts contained unfixable mistakes. So it's still an open question whether like these more general transfers are functorial, and we still don't know what the answer is. I mean, we 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 just have to start uh, thinking about this more seriously. Okay, and for the rest of the talk, I want to. Um, give you an idea of how to construct this functor, but uh, maybe just to simplify all notations, I just want to uh, fix the base to be the point. So I will just work for, I ju will just work with the compact other spaces which are locally contractible, say. Okay, um, what I will um, have to explain to you to be able to define this functor is what topological dog shield homology is. And uh, this is an invariant of dualizable presentable stable infinity categories. So in fact, I will have to uh, first say what a dualizable presentable infinity category, dualizable presentable stable infinity category is. So let me start by uh, telling you that. Um, so let TR stable be the infinity category whose objects are presentable infinity categories, uh, which happen to be stable. And if you don't know what stable means, you can uh, think of it as an enhancement of the notion of a triangulated category. And examples are, of course, spectra or the derived category of, um, of a ring. And in this category, if you are uh, stable, the morphisms that we consider are the co-continuous functors, equivalently functors which are left adjoints. Um, again, I mean, this Lurie or Kelly tensor product uh, equips uh, PR stable with a close symmetric moida structure. Uh, this is because, I mean, um, Spectra, the infinity category of spectra is uh, idempotent, say, uh, in particular. Um, I mean, this descends to a uh, monoidal structure for the stable things. And the unit is the infinity category of spectra. And uh, then I define uh, an object of PR stable to be dualizable if it is dualizable with respect to the tensor product of uh, Luri or Kelly, whatever. Um, and I mean, I just, let me just fix some notation. I define the PR dual to be the non full subcategory of PR stable, whose objects are the dualizable categories and whose morphisms are the strongly co continuous ones. And strongly co continuous means that you have a left adjoint and you also ask the right adjoint to be co continuous. Um, maybe to give you an example, if you start with a locally compact the topological space, you can prove that if, if you take sheaves of spectra on it, this is dualizable. It's a theorem that's due to Lurie. Uh, but in fact, in most cases, this is not compactly generated. This is an old, uh, by now, all the observation of Amnon and Neiman. Um, yes. Uh, and um, I mean, maybe this, um, I mean, it's not clear which kind of properties these dualizable categories have. I mean, the definition I, hopefully is clear. It's just, I mean, being dualizable with respect to some monoidal structure. Uh, but maybe to understand what this dualizability is about, let me uh, give you the following uh, characterization of what it means to be dualizable. So uh, a stable uh, presentable infinity category is dualizable if and only if. Uh, so is a retract uh, in PR stable of a completely generated infinity category. But there is another third uh, equivalent uh, condition, which is to be a continuous category in the sense of Johnston and Joyal. Which means that if you if you don't know it, it means that um, so you can take the incompletion of C and you have the um, unit embedding in there. Unit embedding as a left adjoint, which is like taking the colimit. So in in the objects are like formal colimits. You can actually take the colimit because C has colimits, so you can just have this this like colimit functor, which is left adjoint to unit. And being continuous means that this co colimit functor admits a further left adjoint. These really the same definition that Johnston and Joyal give. I think that they introduced this notion, if I remember correctly, because they were trying to look for conditions um, that imply exponentiality for for a double thing. It's even it's even equivalent, maybe. But uh, let me. Okay, okay, good, good. I remember correctly. Um, but actually, I mean, this notion of continuous categories it's uh, really extremely important. Because it's, this is what uh, has been used by Efimov to extend localizing invariants to 
from compactly generated infinity categories to dualizable stable infinity categories. And this might uh, sound uh, like not interesting to you, but the thing is that, I mean, before uh, we could apply like localizing invariants, like things like K theory or I don't know, THH or whatever you can think of, like to categories like, I don't know, perfect complexes on, on a scheme. But now we can also apply it to categories like sheaves on a locally compact across topological space, because this is an example of a dualizable. But before you couldn't do it because sheaves on a locally compact across space are compactly generated, are dualizable, but not compactly generated. So this is really like opening a new world of possibility uh, from the perspective of sheaf theory. And so the theory of Efimov is really very, very important for, for the techniques of, uh, of our proof, but uh, unfortunately I don't have the time to explain it now. Uh, but uh, for today, as I said, we mainly care about topological dark shield homology, and this one is much easier to define for uh, uh, dualizable categories. And so let me give you the definition of uh, topological dark shield homology. And this is like really something that you might be um, familiar with, uh, because I mean, when you have a dualizable uh, object into a monoidal category, say what you can extract out of it is the trace. And this is exactly what the HH does. So uh, let me just uh, write, let, let me yeah, write in, um, in formulas what I have said in, raw, in words. Um, so if you start with something which is dualizable, you have uh, this co-evaluation map, which goes from, from spectra to uh, C tensor C dual. And then you also have the evaluation map. You can compose these two and you get what's uh, called the trace. And the definition of THH uh, is uh, just given by, you take this trace functor and you apply it to the sphere spectrum. And uh, in fact, um, this uh, THH can be upgraded to a functor of infinity categories from uh, PR dual to the infinity category of spectra. And this is a theorem by OUA, Sibylla, and Sherovsky. And maybe just to give you an idea of what this thing does, if you apply THH to um, she to the infinity category of sheaves of spectra on a locally compact thousand space, this gives you back the compactly supported cohomology with coefficients in the sphere of X. And this is really a very easy computation to make. Uh, yes, now let me tell you how to use uh, THH to define these functors that I uh, mentioned. Uh, so, right, I, I said that I, I'm going to define only the, the case where the base is the point. So if you, if you consider like this slice category that I had before and you specialize it to when X is the point, this becomes the category of compact outer spaces, which are locally contractible and whose morphisms are uh, locally contractible morphisms between them. So now I want to construct a contravariant functor from this one to the infinity category of spectra. And what do I do? So uh, first of all, we have a functor from uh, CH LC to presentable uh, dualizable categories, which at the level of objects uh, associate uh, infinity category of sheets, and at the level of morphisms associates this F lower sharp. F lower sharp is strongly co-continuous because uh, it has a left adjoint with F, which is F upper star, and F upper star is again co-continuous. So like this functor is well-defined. I call it SH uh, lower sharp for hopefully, uh, um, Understandable reasons. Um, and then what you can do is that um, you first do this SH lower sharp, you then apply THH and you go to spectra. And from spectra, you can go to spectra up just by taking duals because, I mean, infinity category spectra has a closed uh, symmetric model structure, which is the usual smash product. Uh, and therefore, in the end, you get uh, a contravariant functor from CH locally contractible to spectra. And I mean, the content of our proof is exactly to verify that these functors uh, at the level of objects gives homology of the shape and uh, at the level of morphisms, it gives you the transfers. But of course, I mean, uh, the verification at the level of object is fairly easy. I mean, it follows from the lemma that I mentioned before, but uh, the verification at the level of morphisms, it's, uh, it's the tricky part, of course, and it involves a lot of stuff. So I will not be able to tell you uh, what that is, except what, what, what goes into that exactly. But maybe let me just, uh, to conclude, let me just give you some really, really uh, vague ideas of what goes in into the proof. Um, so I guess that uh, there's a typo in there, should be our. Um, 
So the main, the main tools that we use uh, is the uh, theory of localizing motives. And these were introduced uh, uh, via derivators by Sisinski and Tabuada, and then uh, in the context of infinity categories by Bloomberg, Gapner, and Tabuada. And uh, we also use some of these recent results uh, due to FMOP that I mentioned before. Um, yeah, so I mean, the vague idea, say, is that what we actually prove is some motivic statement. So it's some some statement about this infinity category of localizing motives. Uh, and in fact, um, this means that it's something that you can specialize to each localizing invariant. So examples of localizing invariants are THH or K-theory, for example. And the, the thing is that if you specialize the statement that we have at the level of motives to THH, then you get functorality of the traces. But in fact, you can also uh, apply K theory to our statement, and you also get a lot of interesting stuff. So, um, in, for example, you can show that um, you can associate uh, simple homotopy types to um, locally contractible and proper maps. Uh, and there is also, yeah, maybe let me now let me now go into the details of what I mean with this. But that's just uh, just know that I mean in principle. What we prove is interesting not only for application to THH, uh, namely functorality of transfers, but also to application to K theory, for example. And uh, this uh, might give a lot of interesting statement. And uh, I guess that would be everything that I want to say for today. So thank you, Marco. Uh, uh, thank you. And uh, we have our first round of silent applause and uh, so now we we move to question time. Um, so if someone has a question, please unmute yourself and ask ask the question. So uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I've just a, a small comment actually. Uh, it's uh, it's about uh, the definition of locally contractible. Uh, I think it was in slide number four, something like that. Mm -hmm, yeah. The, there you have a, a condition on the left adjoint uh, that you called uh, product formula, I think. Projection formula, yes. Projection formula, right. Uh, so uh, that formula is actually very well known in uh, in categorical logic as well. And uh, it's called Frobenius property or Frobenius reciprocity, sorry. Uh, and I think the name was introduced by Lovier, but I'm not sure about that. I just wanted to point this out. Yeah, I mean, I guess that there are many ways in which you can interpret this uh, local contractible. So, uh, I mean, for example, uh, this projection formula is equivalent to uh, asking that the lower sharp it's an internal left adjoint when you consider like sheets mm -hmm. on X as an internal category to uh, sheets on Y. Right. Uh, or uh, also this is equivalent to asking that the F upper star is uh, uh, locally Cartesian closed as a, as a functor. So yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, that there, are, there, are, there are many ways to interpret this notion of uh, of local contractibility. I just wanted to like give the easiest one just to, to, to write on the slide and to be understandable, say. No, okay, thanks. Okay, do we have other questions? So while people- uh, I have a question. Yes, please go. Um, so if I take the functor you guys constructed, and let's say I restrict the CW complexes, mm -hmm. well, um, Yes, let me restrict to CW complexes, and then presumably, in some sense, this inverts some sort of homotopy equivalence. Uh, yes, yes, the functor inverts homotopy equivalence because shapes inverts homotopy equivalences. Right, and so if I invert the homotopy equivalences, mm -hmm. do I get like the naivest, like or like maybe the first form of like functoriality of Weber Godley transfers? I would have guessed was just a functor from some infinity category of spaces with, let's say, finite fibers? Like, do I get this category or do I get some other category? 
Yeah, actually, I'm not yet completely sure about the localization of this category is. So, I mean, uh, hopefully, um, hopefully, yeah, I mean, at least if you restrict to CW complexes, it should be something like uh, finite uh, finite homotopy types uh, uh, whose maps uh, are happen to have uh, finite homotopy fibers. But I, I, I'm not completely sure. Let me, let me, let me not say, let me not say more than that. So I'm, I'm, I'm not completely sure. We have to dig into that because I mean it seems kind of restrictive to. So the the conditions that these maps have seem to be kind of restrictive. Right. Uh, I mean, so do we know, for example, that like any map is homotopy equivalent to some locally contractible? I guess some uh, map with the form you guys. Locally Consider. contractible, yes, but and proper, no. I mean, the problem is like having both the things at the same time, because I you see. can you can always turn everything into a vibration. Vibration imply should imply should imply locally contractible, but the thing is that usually even if you have like uh, fibers which are finite, homotopically finite, say, uh, like the the process of turning a map into a vibration breaks completely the the property of being actually like compact. It, the fibers will be like compact up to homotopy, but they will not right. be strictly compact. In our case, we really have something with like strict fibers, which coincide with the homotopy fibers uh, are like compact. And this seems to be very restrictive. So being able to turn a map into something which is at the same time uh, locally contractible and proper seems to be like a very hard thing to do. So uh, which, which which somehow uh, uh, makes it hard to understand what exactly this localization is, but hopefully we will be able to understand it uh, at some point. Cool, thanks. Sure. Uh, thank you. I think we don't have time for another question. Uh, so we we thank Marco for his very nice talk one last time. Thank you, Marco, for coming. Sure. And we have a couple of minutes of preparation for the next talk with Simona Ri, so people can go and prepare coffee.